So um, today, um, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Zhou uh, Xu Yu Zhou um, from Chinese Science Academy uh, Institute of My Microbiology. So um, uh, I know Joe pretty well because uh, he took a sabbatical in NH uh, back to 2017. We spent almost uh, a year together uh, working um, uh, side by side. And uh, uh, Xu actually finished uh, his uh, bachelor degree in Shandong University. And then he finished uh, his PhD in Osaka University, uh, Japan. Uh, after which he uh, continued to pursue his academic uh, career in uh, UCSD, uh, mainly uh, followed the um, job with Jeffrey Bluestone in UCSD, uh, working on the regulatory T cells, which he continued to uh, work on after he became independent. So uh, from 2009, uh, Xu actually back to China and then start his own independent group in Institution of Microbiology, Chinese Science Academy, and then continue focus uh, study on the regulatory T cells and the molecular basis on uh, controlling T reg development and uh, uh, function. So she did a lot of um, outstanding work uh, related to the T cell, um, uh, both human and mouse, and then particular focus on the molecular mechanism for uh, T-Rex cells development and functionality. And uh, I think the most impressive thing is uh, she is really a ex expert in um, generating different uh, transgenic oh. mouse line and tools uh, for uh, cellular and molecular study for the T-Rex cells. And then uh, he extended his T-Rex uh, study, not only restricted in the uh, molecular biology, but also uh, extended to autoimmune disease model and then tumor model. So today we are going to hear Xu's uh, uh, latest work on the uh, T-Rex cell heterogeneity and uh, stability. Uh, Xu, we are looking forward to your talk. Please uh, carry on. Uh Thanks, Chuan, gave me the wonderful uh, introduction and the invitation. Uh, it's my great pleasure to uh, share our, our research on this T reg heterogeneity and stability. Uh, when we start immunology, uh, everybody told us the immune system has the ability to uh, know which one is self and which one is non-self. They can pick up the non-self antigen and get rid of this uh, uh, pathogen. Uh, what we think is probably the most important question in knowledge, but how we uh, how the immune system can uh, achieve this uh, ability to uh, tell which one is self versus non-self. Uh, there are a lot of models. Uh, back to 1959, uh, Bennett had proposed a clonal selection model. The basics are very simple. The B cell, maybe the lymphocyte, can re recognize the foreign antigen, but the uh, non-self antigen just die or because of the negative selection part. There's that's not that simple because we know the B cell have a hyper, uh, somatic hypermutation. They continue to generate different uh, possibility to recognize self. So in 1969, the first modification at the T cell in this uh, model, uh, basis argue that the B cell, if they only get a signal one, the stimulation, they're not going to. Uh, really produce uh, uh, anybody until they have a help from the T cell part. Uh, the T cell power produce a lot of cytokine. They, they can help this uh, B cell and CD4 like and we uh, talk a lot about this already. Uh, in 1975, uh, their second modification, we know the T cell, if they only receive the signal one from the APC, meaning the peptide and the MHC engagement, it's not going to activate the T cell. 
uh, we know that they probably need another signal. It's what we call the cost stimulation, mainly the CD28 and B7 molecular uh, engagement. They can help this uh, T cell to be activated. Then they can cause all this immune system going. Uh, in the last uh, uh, a couple of decades, people were trying to understand how we gain this cost stimulation. Uh, in 1989, Jamie, we had proposed another modification. It actually is active. Uh, the bacteria maybe can activate the like toll like receptor. They change this immature form DC to be a mature form. They can upregulate uh, uh, class one peptide and also B7 in the APC side, and then they're, they're determining their self and, and no self. Uh, Polymethacin also add uh, another theory. The basic, uh, she pr proposed uh, the danger signal, this alarming signal, the dead cell, like h protein also can activate this tau like receptor. Maybe push this uh, uh, DC from the immature form to the mature form, then they can active the T cell to uh, keep the immune response on going. Uh, when the, the when we, we just inject the one foreign protein, we don't have this uh, uh, mature mature form DC. We think we will not get any T cell activation. Of course, we don't have antibody production. This sounds a very perfect theory because when uh, you don't have DC activation, everything's not going to go. But is it really the case? Uh, until 2000, uh, there's a very interesting paper published in Immunity by Jeff Bluestone. She, they, uh, he's doing the autoimmune type 1 diabetes. The original idea just try to understand what, whether this uh, type 1 autoimmune diseases can be uh, surprised by getting rid of this, all the cost stimulation signal. So they back the B7-1 and the 2 and also CD28 now count mice to the not background. It probably take two years to finally get these mice. But the results should turn out really surprised. This mice is not uh, develop, uh, it's not surprised the disease, but instead of the get uh, aggressive disease, they probably start only uh, five or 10 Week, week, they start to get uh, autoimmune type 1 diabetes. So that's a really surprise. This suggests when you get rid of this cost stimulation signal, uh, the diabetes actually get worse. They take a long, uh, a couple of years, finally they figure out because they're in this system, the T-Rex, we now call the uh, uh, in that time, we were still using the CD25 as a marker, was to decrease, almost gone in this B7 knockout of CD28 mouse, CD28 knockout mouse. So that means if you don't have T-Rex, all this system can be screwed up. Uh, T-Reg is actually it's not a, a new concept. It goes back to 1960. Uh, Richard Gasson have proposed a suppressor T cell theory. First, it turned out that the CD8 theory maybe is not right. Uh, in that time, it's very there are a couple uh, important funding like we if we get rid of the thymus in the day three, we can get the systemic autoimmune. Uh, it's all uh, in this. Stage, uh, Shimon Sakaguchi is continuing to try to figure out which population actually is uh, critical for this uh, immune suppressive. Uh, in 1995, they figured out the CD25 can actually work as a surface marker for this uh, regulatory population. Uh, in 2000, a uh, couple of groups have uh, uh, included uh, Fred Zwanstel. They found there's weird mice called scurfing. 
uh, they have this uh, kind of uh, a mutation in the FOXP3 gene. They figure out the FOXP3 is critical for this uh, IPEX syndrome. In 2003, uh, several group uh, figure out the FOXP3 is a master regulator of this uh, T-Rex cells. Uh, I just want to emphasize the FOXP3 is a master control gene for the T-Rex because our expression is restricted to CD25 and uh, uh, positive cells. If we get rid of FOXP3, neither by knockout or this spontaneous uh, scarfing disease uh, strain, we all get the lethal autoimmune diseases, which can be rescued by transfer Y-type CD25 T-Rex. Gosh, uh, uh, Rudensky had did a really elegant experiment uh, by introducing the DTR receptor into the FOXP3 locus. We can show uh, when you treat with diversar toxin to get rid of FOXP3 expression cells, the mice will die in two weeks with uh, severe autoimmune disease too. By using retrovirus transduction or transgenic animal, when you overexpress some FOXP3 in no T-Rex cell, actually you can confer partial uh, suppressive function, both in vitro and in vivo. Uh, when I joined Jeff's lab, I kind of hate this colitis model and the uh, in vitro suppression assay. So we decided to decide some genetic model to uh, study T-Rex function in vivo. So we generate the uh, GIP cray back box with three transgenic mice. The mice did work. If we send in uh, GIP and CD25, it looks really nice. But we first found uh, when we cross these mice with the frog Dyser mice, the mice just uh, develop severe autoimmune disease like the scurvy. So this is probably the first uh, strain uh, we found is really finna copy the scurfing mouse diseases. Uh, from the beginning, we always think this a T-Rex a uniform or homogeneous population, but it turned out it's not true. Uh, we right now we know the T-Rex have the basically have many different subside and have many different fever. Uh, just based on their activation stasis, we can uh, divide T-Reg into uh, central T-Reg, we call C-T-Reg, or effective T-Reg, or we call E-T-Reg. The central T-Reg expression, the CD6 to R high, CCR7 high, they're located in the T-cell zone, they receive the IL-2 signal, and they are lonely. Uh, based on the uh, Dan Campos finding, they found the effector cell, they turn on the CD44, they downregulate the CD6 to L, and the CCR7 as well. They can migrate to non lymphoid organ, and they turn on the ICO signal. So the ICO signal is critical for the effective rec function and survive. Uh, we now know the T cell signal actually is really uh, critical for this uh, uh, CT rec to ET rec transition. Uh, Shasha Ludensky has crossed this uh, Fox B3 Cre with uh, T cell alpha knockout mice. They find if you really stop the T cell signal, uh, the other cell stops in the central T rec part, just like a live cell. By using uh, RSIG, they figure out once the TCR signal uh, ongoing, they probably turn on like uh, 100 to 500 gene turn on, including the critical suppressing molecule like CDR4, like 3, IR10, IR35. Clearly, this step is not only regulated in this transcription uh, level, it's also in post transcription level. Recently, we figured out one uh, ribosome biogenesis factor, NOC 4 l actually pretty, uh, really critical though in this uh, T-Reg activation. Uh, this is the sighting we have both uh, NOC 4 l knockout mice and white, uh, white type cells in the same mice. 
so the Y type cells GIP negative, the no card is GIP positive. We can tell uh, the Y uh, uh, cell can uh, induce really strong icos and the KRG1 and the CXR3, but the no card mice cannot uh, induce any of this activation marker, but they keep stay very high PCR2 and the uh, CD6-2R and the CCR7. They also stay very high FOXP3 expression. The mechanisms turned out really interesting. We found the ICOS CTA4 and CXR3 and CD6-9 MRA level, they all look very similar. We don't detect any difference in this uh, white uh, no card cells, but in the protein, they have a severe deficiency in this activation. So it's turned out when we get rid of a, a ribosome biogenesis factor, they're not have a huge impact on uh, MRE, but they're selectively on this, uh, this kind of protein uh, translation. Uh, the mice actually develop a, a, a very sick uh, autoimmune diseases. The mice die probably it's just like scurfing, maybe like 20 days, our mice just died. They have a small body, they have a huge uh, uh, lymph node and spleen, just like scurfing mice. So from this uh, data, we found a new uh, uh, transcribe uh, bio, uh, ribosome biogenesis factor when they knock out uh, in the T Rex, not going to prevent all the translation, but they kind of specifically regulate the ICOS, CR4, and CD6 non translation. When we do the T Rex research, we always ask how T Rex works. If we get the knockout mice, the reviewer always ask us a similar question, why, why the T-Rex is not working? Uh, so, so far, uh, there are more than 10 different mechanisms having to uh, try to address how T-Rex works. Uh, this is a quite nice review from Dan, uh, Daniel Vellali. His summary is that T-REC probably uses a different mechanism to do in the immunosuppressive function. They can uh, produce a TGA beta, R35, and IR10. This suppressive cytokine can prevent the effective T-REC function directly. Uh, some RNA-seq data also suggest uh, T-REC can produce a lot of granzyme B and granzyme A, and the immune perfilin that can kill this uh, tumor cells directly. Uh, kill the T cell directly, sorry. Uh, we all know that the T reg express a really high CD25, so it's always a, a, in, a hyper size says this is CD25 and concentrate the, this IR2. Maybe it's crucial for the CD8 activation. And CT reg also express a very high CD67 and CD69. Target the EC is another uh, mechanism proposed by many lab, like CTR4, like IDO. Maybe uh, they, they directly can uh, paralyze this EC as well. But for us, I, we also try to understand whether this is this is drag actually have a one effector have a multiple mechanism, just like uh, this. Uh, uh, bigger, or oh, they actually have a multiple effector. Uh, we start to uh, uh, some experiment to just try to understand more about this uh, TREC activation. We use the CXR5 and the ICOS as a marker uh, to separate the TREC into weak effector and strong effector just based on these two marker expression. Uh, when we short these cells out, they all seem to be low, they're effector T-reg. But when we just check some suppressor uh, related mechanism, we found the IR10 actually is really high in this stronger, strong effector, almost not expressing the weak effector cells. 
But the other surprising cytokine, the EBI3 subunit, actually uh, is dominant in this weak effector. So we propose a model, maybe the T cells activation uh, strains actually can drive two different subsite T rec to produce. One is IR35, one is IR10. So we decided to generate uh, another reporter to, uh, to check the IR35 because we don't have a good antibody to spin in the IR35. The mice work with uh, use this mice found actually it's really nice. The R35 population is not overlay with R10 population at all. So they're both uh, their total separate population. When we give the mouse with anti CD3, we know they can boost the R10 production as uh, from 5% to 20%, but we didn't see the R35 induction go up. Uh, we know this R10 production is uh, depend on blimp. So we cross the Fox P3 pre with the blimp uh, flux mice with also this reporter. Uh, when we get rid of the blimp condition knockout, the R10 production is complete gone. Just like the published stuff. Uh, we are really interested in see this uh, R35 producing cell actually go up. So they're, they're, they're not dependent on the blimp. Uh, we also cross the uh, uh, EBI3 or R35 reporter with a blimp GAP knocking mice. We see the pretty similar result like the IR10. So EBI3 producing cell mainly blimp negative. If we get this one, two, three, four population, the, uh, the blimp uh, negative and the uh, R35 negative, they're not produce any IR10. Double uh, the blimp positive IR10, IR35 positive cells, this population produce like 20% IR10. But the EBI3 population is not I have any IR10 at all. Uh, we also try to do the another side if you use this antibody side 1.1 antibody to get rid of the IR35, which is want to check whether they have any impact on the IR10 production uh, producing T rec. Uh, we first start with a non uh, metastasis model. We inject this reporter mice with a B16 uh, tumor. After uh, two weeks, we just check the lung to see how many tumor cell can uh, migrate to the lung. Uh, we use this uh, NSI 1.1 antibody to get this at least 35 positive cells. We found that it can uh, really nicely to prevent the tumor uh, migration to the lung. In the same time, we found the R35 positive cell actually down. But when we check the blimp or IR10 producing cells, we didn't see any difference. So this is a uh, simple summary. We generate a mouse that can uh, separate this uh, IR35 positive cell and IR10 positive cells. When we treat with the anti-CD3, they enhance IR10, but they don't have any impact on this IR35 cells. When we get rid of this IR10 with blimp knockouts, they don't have any impact on this either. We treat anti-SI1 anybody to get rid of, get rid of uh, this IR35, but we don't have any impact on this IR10 production cells. Uh, then, as you already we did the RNA seq analysis, we basically found this uh, uh, EBI3 or IR35 T reg, just like the blimp no cuff cells. Uh, we pick up some uh, gene from this RNA seq leaks, like uh, ICOS, TG, and RY6, it's really high in this blimp positive sub subside. Uh, we did the flow as the uh, results tell. Uh, the blimp positive expressed really high ICOS, 
uh, the IR35 is kind of like in the middle, the digit, probably that's the same, same stuff. We also find this really interesting, a lot of CAM-CAM receptor, including CX, CR5, CCR4, CCR10, CCR3, CCR19, it's all accumulated in IR10 products in DREC. So we did some uh, uh, flow confirmation. It is true in the blimp IR10 producing cell, they produce a lot of IR4, but not as IR35 positive cells. Uh, the migration, in, in, in order to really check the migration, we inject the PE antibody directly label the spin cell that's ready to migrate out. Uh, we found that this blimp positive IR10 cells, maybe half the cell is ready to leave the lymphoid organ, but the Psi1 positive IR35 positive cells cannot uh, label by this uh, five minutes uh, labeling. So this data also suggests there are two different uh, T-Rex uh, effector have a different uh, geography location. Uh, we also confirm some other gene actually is really high in enhanced in the R35 population, including the MIC and VCAM, but not the grants and K and B. Put all this together, we found this uh, two subsides are really different. R35 positive cell, probably they have a more CCR7 expression. They try they tend to locate in the lymphoid organ, but the R10 producing cell, they have all this kind of receptor. Uh, they're ready to leave the lymphoid organ, the high blimp expression. They also have a, a other uh, function a molecule like runs and B and K and others. Oh, but the function, we think probably they have a complementary function. So we did the blimp knockout and then treat with this EB3 uh, anti psi one antibody. So we have this kind of a synergistic effect, at least in the uh, uh, colitis. Uh, when we treat with psi one antibody, this must have developed spontaneous colitis. It's a, a clinic. Uh, uh, HG standing. Uh, we also found the cytokine production probably following the same trend when we got rid of these two infectors, we have a mm. uh, the big uh, R interferon gamma and the uh, R17 production. So from this data, we think at least uh, for the T-Rex infector, we can uh, separate them from IR35 T-Reg and the IR10 T-Reg, they're, they're really different. Uh, the IR35 probably they're, they're producing IR35, they're probably uh, also expression high level of the CCR7. They look at the, the T-cell zone of second lymphoid organ for IR10. T-Reg they produce high level IR10 and other granzymes. They also express a terminal differential regulator blimp one and there are lots of uh, receptor like CCR5, two, it's like they uh, migrated to the periphery tissue, probably for uh, the suppressor local immune response. But they have this kind of complementary role in maintaining self tolerance. Uh, the, the second part, I'm going to uh, switch a little bit talking about the instability of t -ray. Uh This is the original uh, from the experiment I did in Jeff Bluestone lab when we crossed with the Fox V3 GIP uh, back transgenic mice with the Rosa YP. Uh, we found a very interesting population. Some cell actually lose Fox V3 and this kind of cells, very strong effector and memory phenotype. They can produce a lot of uh, interferon gamma and R17, they can cause autoimmune disease. Uh, there are 
uh, after we published the paper, uh, clearly some people, uh, 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 Samantha have also shown in the mock uh, specific T uh, T reg they have this kind of uh, enhancement of the, the T reg instability, and uh, Takayanagi also found this uh, X T reg and can convert into a uh, uh, H seventeen cells to attack the uh, uh, to cause autoimmune arthritis. But the model to explain the uh, instability of T-Rex is really controversial. We have proposed a lineage reprogramming model. We think even the commitment uh, T-Rex in some uh, special situation like infection, information, or lymphopenic, they can transfer to another box three inactive cells. This is probably a really strong effector cells. Uh, probably the involved in a, a rematuration of the CNS2 side in the Fox B3 locus. But Holly and uh, Shimon Sakaguchi have proposed a different model. They suggest uh, probably we just uh, taking the different population. They think probably there are some uncommitment, uh, committed TREG. Although this uh, uh, cell produces box B3, but they may not have this all this epigenic uh, uh, engagement. So there, there need another step to really commit to the real T recognition. Once they committed, they're not going to change anymore. Uh, only the uncommitted cells, when they have this kind of special uh, condition, maybe they can turn off the box B3 and they develop the t -rex. So our question is whether there's a real committed t rex can really change their fate. Uh, we all know proper t rex can uh, have two different uh, the subside ones from the thymus we call the TT reg or uh, NT reg. Another population is come from the periphery, the knife cell, when they in the TJ beta and the RA rich condition, like the guard, maybe they change to the peripheral T reg. This T reg, a lot of people believe, have a really uh, a, it's not really stable because they're in uh, TGF beta induced T reg when you just transfer to in vivo with the loss box B3 really quick. Uh, so we decided to generate another mice, just get rid of this uh, thing as one. That's a crucial uh, enhancer. Uh, that <coughs> it's not really important for the TT reg development. Uh, uh, Sasha Ludensky have generated the CNS1 deficient mice. When they get rid of this CNS1, the T Rex looks fine, but the preferred T Rex complete block. So we think if we get rid of this thing as one side in the Fox B3 uh, back transgenic uh, construct, maybe we can generate some, another cream mice that is specifically expressed in this thymic drive TT rex. So we put a pre and another uh, surface spurting and the forest spurting in this locus and generate another mice. The mice looks work well. When we have uh, this transgene positive, the box B3 positive cell only a subside of T rex expressing this side one as a, a, a transgene cre. Uh, when we get on the neuropenin positive, Helios positive, we believe this is a T, uh, TT reg marker. We saw this, uh, this population expressing like 80% of SAR121. But in the PT reg population, we don't detect any of this uh, SAR1 create positive cells. When we uh, put the TGI beta to induce a, a T reg production, in vitro, we found there, although they can induce pretty good box B3, but not the side one positive with a creep. To our surprise, when we check the thymus, 
not all the thymus, uh, thymic T Rex cells express this uh, uh, pre. Only maybe the, the 30 percent is uh, pre positive. When we did a more detailed analysis, we found this pre positive cells mature form. Uh, they express really high QA2, CD6QR, but it's really low CD24 and it's really low CD69. We did the time cost, we found this uh, pre induction is really delayed. When we only detect this uh, pre or 7.1 production after nine or 10 days, so there's significant delay in this uh, pre uh, induction. Uh, so this paper gave us a really unique condition. We only mapping the mature form uh, T-Rex because people believe the immature form T-Rex is not stable. They not have this uh, epigenic change to pursue, uh, to granted there's a really committed uh, T-Rex lineage. But our craze looks like they're only expressed in the really late uh, stage. So probably it's a good tool to really map the commit or really stable T-Rex subset. Uh, when we uh, cross this YP and uh, check their TSDR, that's a critical enhancer is uh, for this uh, uh, T-Rex stability. We see this uh, side one positive, Fox D3 positive, YP positive cells. Their, their TSDR is completely uh, immaturate, just like the preflow. Then we compare the two different strains we generated before under the new strain. We found that this, in this population, uh, the YIP positive cells, the, the cream map cell, it's really stable in when the mice is young. They don't have any FOXV3 or only have less 1% FOXV3 decrease in this strain. So, that looks good. We have generated a new mice strain. We can only map the stable T Rex. When we transfer this YP cell to a PCR knockout, but to our surprise, this uh, T Rex cell still can lose Fox V3. Uh, the, the, these are probably like a more than 35% Fox V3 down in this uh, transfer experiment. This uh, Fox B3 negative cells can produce in the phenom gamma. They also try uh, to uh, reprogram to TFH. They can induce this antibody production in this TCR alpha knockout stream. Uh, so, to uh, we try to uh, know what's the reason how this. Uh, uh, situation can change their fate. We want to uh, identify a precursor of this X T rex uh, We probably go back to see the data again. Before the transfer, we found the uh, YP positive cells. There have some populations, the Psi 1.1 negative population. After we transfer, we found only this Psi 1.1 population, uh, negative population that lost Fox B3. So we have this uh, hypothesis. Maybe this is cells less stable. They, when they go to the PCR alpha now cause a lymphopenic condition, they are more easily to lose Fox B3. Uh, so that's the experiment we did first in vitro. We started the YP positive, seven positive cells, and the negative, we just compared the stability in vitro. We found that this side one positive cells are really stable. They don't lose Fox B3 in this culture condition. Uh, we put a lot of IL2 in this setting, of course. But in the side one negative, uh, YP positive cells, they have like 10% Fox B3 scope down. Similar, we found it's also occur in vivo. We sort of this YP positive cell, seven positive and negative, we transfer this cell to in vivo. This side one negative cells are really easy to lose Fox B3. 
uh, more interestingly, if we get on, uh, we sort this out, just check the thing as one of the similar locals, uh, also really high uh, dematurating in a stable t rec we found that in the uh, conventional cells are complete maturate, the Psi1 positive is dematurate 100%. But in this, the Psi1 negative YP positive, the precursor of XDREG, we have this, uh, uh, close uh, 20, per, uh, 20 to 30% are already rematurated. Just a summary for this thing uh, as one mice from Shasha Ludensky stuff. Thing as one is really crucial for this uh, 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 PT rep generation. So our mice only maps the uh, thymic drive T rep. Uh, Wang Yunchen have some studies show the TGF beta signal is contribute uh, the early TT rep generation. So in our this uh, in our thing as one mice, so we kind of fit this conclusion as well because it's um, a CRE only uh, induced in the late stage. Uh, some study from Andrew Law suggests that thing as one probably also involved in uh, stability of Fox B3 expression. We think we can use this to separate the T rep into uh, really stable the Psi1 positive population under the T-REC, X-T-REC precursor, the Psi1 negative. So next we just compare with uh, this Psi1 negative and the Psi1 positive to check what's the difference of these two subsite. Uh, just for a single R6 data, we found a lot of activation related gene is really high in Psi1 negative population. But so CCR7, there's uh, a lot of gene related to uh, uh, resting TREC actually found in the one positive population. Uh, so next, we just get on different uh, uh, subside or uh, different flavor of the effect TREC. One is uh, well known it's a TFR. When the TREC uh, goes to activation, they Differentiation is to as uh, it go to the germ center and maybe there modifies the uh, uh, cell function. Uh, we just get down to this uh, different gate. Uh, maybe the TRFR is already CXR5 high and BD high. Uh, we found that in this setting, when the cell goes to the germ center, they ready to lose Psi1 and Fox B3. Similar stuff we did in the CXCR3 uh, positive T cells, uh, T reg cells. We found this cell express high ICOs down regulated the CD25. Uh, this cell also express uh, less Fox B3. So basically, we found when there's a central T reg or naive T reg, then we get activation to T reg. There, there more easy to destabilize the Fox B3 lineage. We also noticed that probably the CD25 signal is go down in this side, but it increased the I cost signal. So next we broke the uh, use the anti IL2 broke. We got rid of the IL2 signal. We found that actually if you will take the IL2 out, we have more cells that are those Fox B3. Uh, we, if the ICOS is crucial, we use the ICOS ligand to prevent this TFR cells. We can we can tell this T, uh, XT rec production is get, uh, getting low. We also cross with the PI3 constituted active form to this uh, CRE, lo, uh, CRE string. Uh, we found that when we over expression the PI3 kinase signal, we have more cells go, uh, go to the Psi1 negative population and more cells lose Fox B3. Uh, when Li Ping uh, joined the lab, he continued this project. He crossed with the uh, thing as one CRE and the Rosa YP with another reporter. We can uh, just uh, try to short the cell out. When they 
when she ate the mice, it can find the small population of uh, Fox V3 negative and Cy1 positive in the aged mice. Uh, she takes this cell to do the RNA seq, uh, single cell RNA seq. She found uh, this uh, uh, three population can overlay pretty great. This is uh, uh, central T reg, this effector T reg, this TH1 and EFR. When the population we just focus on this RFP positive, Cy1 positive, really stable T reg, we found this uh, population is localized this here perfectly. But the RFP negative, the Cy1 negative cells, we found that this major is TH1 and TFH. There are some cells actually, there are, have, they don't have Fox B3 expression, but they still have this kind of signature to look at the T-Rec part. Uh, the more interesting part is the X-T-Rec precursor. We found they have more activation. The naive population is going down. They have more TFR population. Uh, they have a lot of cell have a goes to this transition phase. When we do the trajectory assay, uh, we found that a lot of cells actually the TFR they go to loss box B3 uh, Finally, we decided to determine what's the effector to really uh, determine are stable or not stable. We use another T bed feed mapping mice. Uh, this is uh, use a Cy1 and CRE. This is another uh, Cree enzyme. It's not going to overlap with the Cree. Uh, we cross this uh, two uh, different uh, fate uh, to, to, uh, to the same mice. So we can map the TH1 lineage and the TREG lineage in the same mice. First thing we found is that uh, the T bad positive T Rex not always stable, just like Jake uh, uh study. They're relative easy to lose uh, this T bad expression. But different from their study, we found the Cy1 negative, the T bad negative cell can reproduce the CD6 QL, they reproduce CR7, they're in CD25. So from this data, we found the Central T reg can um, induce the effect T reg, effect T reg can go back to the central T reg. Uh, when we uh, check in more detail of this uh, uh, H1 T reg fitting mapping mice, we can find this YP positive cells, this, uh, this uh, central T reg, this TD tomato positive cells, TH1, uh, this double positive TH1 T reg. So compare with the, the central T reg, uh, uh, if they go through T, uh, the T uh, T bed lineage, we found that they have more X Fox V3 production. Uh, if we just compare with the T bed stable one and the instable one, these are a lot of cells we believe have go to the C T reg already. We found that this T bed stable T reg have a more Cells the low spark B3. So, what's the big picture of this instability? We believe the T reg box B3 instability actually help T T reg to distinguish a self and no self antigen. Uh, we believe uh, the majority of T reg developed in the thymus when this. CD4 single positive cell uh, see the antigen. A strong self antigen can cause the cell negative selection to just die. When the weak signal, they change this cell to T conventional cells, so they go out to develop the normal T cell. The medium strains of T uh, cell signal strains are probably induce a TT reg generation. In the periphery, because we don't have this really high affinity clone, all the self antigen has died in the next selection phase. Probably they just induce a TT reg to activation, then the activation, then they come back again, so they're stable for the self antigen. 
But for the no self antigen, we think probably uh, because this uh, PTRAG uh, can meet really strong TCR strains because they don't have the for antigen, the negative selection in this stage. So we think probably in this uh, foreign antigen stimulation, a really strong TCR signal can destabilize this FOXP3. Total change this FOXP3 positive cell to a negative population, they have the really strong effector function actually to help the uh, immune system to clean this pathogen. Uh, Finally, I would like to thank Zhong Mei, did the Sai one priest. Uh, she's now working in NIH. Uh, with, uh, Xun Dong Wei did the R35 stuff. He's uh, uh, in Beijing Hospital right now. Uh, and another, uh, Xue Ping Zhu, uh, work on the knock for l stuff. I would like to thank uh, Bai Dong and Fu Ping and the George of Fugao give me a great, uh, lot of help on this uh, project and all this funding as well. Thank you. Thank you, Xu, uh, for the great talk. So we can take some questions. If have anyone have questions, please raise your hand or type your question in the chat box. Uh, I think I'm gonna start to ask a couple of questions. Um, First of all, the, I, I want to ask about the NOC4L uh, uh, data. So um, you say that this is actually involved in the Repson Genesis uh, process, which actually uh, specifically controlled the, um, controlled the protein synthesis, right? Yes. So um, I guess my first question is, uh, if you profile the protein uh, level in your T-Rex cells, uh, did you actually check the proteomics profile between the Y-type and knockout? We haven't because uh, the cell number is really low. Uh, we haven't able to do that. But just for the flow staining, we check CD4, we check the FOXP3, it's not changed at all. We put the ROSA YP in these cells, the YP is not changed. So, uh, so, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so there are not the impact all the global uh, translational machine that we believe. So some proteins are, they can translate no more, but only this uh, protein like ICOS and CTR4, CT69, they're, they're really go down. Uh, there are two different hypothesis to explain why this happened. One is probably the concentration of this uh, ribosome. Maybe it's really crucial. Maybe different MRA have a different uh, affinity to this uh, ribosome. So uh, maybe the CD4 and this kind of YP and FOXP3, they don't need a lot of high concentrate uh, ribosome machinery. They, they only need probably the, the, a few, they can do their job. But for those cells, uh, for those molecules related to activation, they probably need a really high concentration of this uh, NOC, uh, ribosome machinery. Maybe just because their affinity to the ribosome is relatively low. So you need probably a lot of machine to really like the ribosome to bond this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, MRA to start their translation. Uh, we don't know for sure, but it's just one hypothesis. Another more, more interesting hypothesis actually suggests that uh, they'll probably have a different machinery. Uh, some people have this evidence on the development, uh, but we, we don't have that evidence yet. So, but this difference, um... It's non distinguishable between the T T reg and then the P T reg. Uh, no. So if you let's say if you take the naive cells in vitro and then using Y type knockout naive cells. Uh, by the way, naive cells is the same. Naive cells local examiner. We did some of the T conventional cells work. They look pretty similar. Uh, so, interesting. <clears throat> uh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I'm, uh, I, think I, 
I think I want to ask if the naive Celsius number is similar, then uh, what about the um, what about the memory cells? Memory cells. Yeah. Uh, if one, yeah, memory cell cells actually the level is going down. This uh, ribosome uh, machinery is the naive cell have the low level expression. When we do the stimulation, no matter if it's in vitro or in vivo, they go up. The memory cells actually go down. But this um this um flux mass you're crossing on the FOP3 crate, right? Yes. So if you take the naive cells in vitro and then just to do in vitro differentiation, um, do you see the the difference of the FOP3 amount in after you give them TJ beta? No. So it's only a fact the thymus developed develop, uh, derived the T-Rex cells. Uh, we didn't see the difference on the Fox B3 expression level. Uh, I think we only see the activation stasis is different. I see. Um, I think the other question I have is um, on this mice, if you generate on the general CD4 CRE, um, mm -hmm. you actually see this, I will say, if you say that um, uh, selectively activate certain MRA, not all of them. So mm -hmm. I guess the, the general uh, CD4 CRE compared with 4P3 CRE should have different phenotype. Well, uh, I believe this molecule also is important in the CD4 uh, conventional cells as well. Uh, the very interesting part is uh, we put the soluble CRE uh, added to the flux uh, uh, culture the T cell. Only the early point the, this CRE is going to work. We put a TAT CRE added to the point. culture condition directly, yes. Uh, when we put the early timing point, they're not going to proliferate, they're not going to go to the blast, they're not going to function either. But uh, once the cells goes to go through the cycle, they don't need this knock for IR anymore. Uh, if we hit uh, this creep after a two days culture, uh, we add the creep in, they don't have any infect at all. So you're saying if you generate the CD4 CRE, then you should see the abnormality on the thymus. Uh, CD4 CRE, I don't know. I, I, I just think the T cells are not going to uh, activate. At all? No. I see. Um, my second question is related to your fate mapping animal. So I just want to clarify a couple of things. You have this uh, CNS1 CRE mice, but this in this mice, you actually already delete the CNS1 locus, right? Uh, this is a bad transgenic mice. So, so they you, don't have, right, well, they don't have this impact on the endogenous locus. Right, I know, but I'm just saying that CNS1 is gone in this yes. mice. Okay. Yes. So in this uh, fate, if you generate a fate mapping mice on this uh, CRE compare with 4P3 CRE, and then I will say in term of the YLP positive uh, subset, so you, you, gen, you cross it on the ROSA YLP, right? Yes. Yeah, so if you have this mice and then you, if you um, isolate the YLP positive cells, so mm -hmm. I guess in vivo, if you transfer them to certain, let's say autoimmune model or the inflammation model, then mm -hmm. this mice should have better functionality of the T-Rex cells. Yeah, I, we believe so. Have you tried? No. <laughs> okay. 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 Thanks. Um, anyone else have questions? Hi, Xu Yu. Hey, Qing Jiang, Qing Jiang. Hi, uh, hi uh, very nice talk. So my question is, uh, um, I'm wondering about the T cell reptile of the uh, your T Rex cells. Um, so is that your P T Rex cells can recognize the um, inflammatory antigens or some other uh, non-self antigens? P 
KT reg definitely can recognize some. Uh, KT reg, we believe there's a lot of things maybe they are recognized for antigen. Uh, a lot of PT regs from the guard. So uh, there have a lot of TJ beta in the guard. It's a lot of RA in the guard. So we believe that probably the, the, if we do the reptile analysis, we think the PT reg is more likely recognize the foreign antigen. But of course, there have some uh, self antigen as well. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so very interesting work on the uh, L35 T reg and the L10 T reg. So, are they come from the same lineage or not? So, <laughs> I just wondering about. That. Yeah, well, I haven't saw the data. Uh, in, in this L35 mice, we have this uh, DRE as well, this query homola protein. We did this feed mapping stuff as well. Uh, they can. They you know, when we transfer this uh, 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 feed mapping the R35 cells into vivo, uh, we found some cell type actually loads R35 and the expression R10 again. So we think, uh, uh, but not all the cells. Some cells are they're losing R35, but some not. Uh, we think probably it's more dependent on condition. If you get the right condition, probably it's R35 cells can uh, change to this uh, R10 producing cell as well. Okay. Uh, but yeah. So do they share the same uh, TCR reptile or uh, yeah, do you have- Oh, that's a really good question. We haven't did that experiment yet. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anyone else have the question? I think I have one more question uh, related to the TBAT double feed mapping mice. So, mm -hmm. you know, the TBAT uh, FOP3 double positive, um, TBAT uh, FOP3 double positive um, T reg cells consider actually have uh, better or stronger potent for the autoimmunity. I just want to ask your. Um, Ask you whether you actually ever tried to see the gene profile on on these cells in the face. The T-bad positive cells. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I because think you I have, have the because you have have the fate mapping mice. I I I don't remember it was the Lindman or Flavel did the the double positive cell sequencing. Uh, but your in your case, it's not ex exactly the double positive cells. They are actually uh, their double uh, fate mapping lineage. So right. I just want to um, ask you if you ever check um, these RT cell have functionality or let's say the uh, genetic difference signature compare with um, your other, for example, YP single positive or TD tomato single positive cells. I think we did the RA stake, but uh, I don't remember what we got from those data. <laughs> this is important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so you have you, you haven't yeah, tested. We, 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 I didn't remember what we found. Uh, as, that, as, yeah, I think maybe we can go back to this experiment again because there, we just did the uh, the uh, population. We probably need to do it in the single cell level right now. Uh, a lot of things are actually is really different from single cell and the poll RSA. But uh, but let's say, have you ever at least tried the suppressive um, capacity on these cells? Uh, we didn't uh, do, uh, because I don't believe the in vitro suppression assay. Uh, I guess the double positive cells is, uh, the population is really small. So I don't think, right. I'm not sure if you're able to, you know, do in vivo uh, function validation. Right, um, that's the, the pain part for the, all this research. Yeah. If you only have a really few population, uh yeah 
Oh, that's really painful to short out. This I know, but I'm just saying that, uh, you know, maybe in vitro is um, easier to do. At least you can have smaller scale to actually examine. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe we can check the TH1, TH2, all this, and maybe see whether you have this kind of potential to surprise, let's say, maybe TH1. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we should do that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Okay, so anybody else have questions? Okay, so if not, then uh, thanks uh, Shi again for the wonderful talk. And then uh, I think uh, we learned a lot from the uh, T cell uh, stability and then appreciate a lot of uh, unpublished data. So uh, thanks again. And uh, Thank thanks for everyone's participation. Hopefully I see all you guys uh, the next seminar is this Sunday.